Today I'm going to show you how to repair the depth sensor on the Quest 3. In order to properly do this repair, I think we need to understand exactly what's going on with the faceplate and how this assembly of sensors and cameras works. There's really six components housed in these three slots here. These two bottom cameras are your tracking cameras, and they look exactly like the tracking camera that's on the outside of the headset. Whereas these two top cameras in these positions are your full color pass through RGB cameras. Now in the center here, we've got our depth sensor, but there's also something else going on here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take off these brackets to understand better what is going on underneath the hood. For the purpose of taking off the brackets, I really just need my Phillips screwdriver here. A little later on, we may need a heat gun and a spudger, but we'll get to that later. Now that I've removed those three screws, this bracket can just come out and you can see that thermal paste. We're going to set that off to the side and you can see that it holds in these two cameras here. Now that I've removed the screws that hold that bracket in, we can go ahead and pull this one out as well. And now you can see these two cameras and the depth sensor here. But here's a good question. What is underneath here? Because there's nothing on this side. So what exactly did Meta hide here? Because there is something. I can see this cable here. All right. Now we can just kind of lift this away. So after uncovering this and lifting this up, I can kind of read the numbers on there. And it looks like the numbers read 1458P. Uh, which I guess is some sort of op amp, but I'm not exactly sure what it does. It's not on the other side, so it's not something that's integral to the cameras. It's, it must provide some sort of other function. It does seem to share this ribbon cable so that data must be transferred to the board through this camera cable. Now that I've got these brackets off, I'm gonna go ahead and take these cameras out so you can see how easily these just pop out of here. Cool, so there's one of your tracking cameras and there's one of your full color pass-through cameras. I actually stopped and uh, and Googled both of these part numbers just to make sure, but and not a whole lot came up to be honest with you, but some stuff did come up and on I saw a listing on Amazon and on uh, AliExpress that said that this was a depth sensor. It's it's definitely not. This is definitely the tracking camera. And again, you can tell just because the anatomy of the camera there and there matches, whereas whereas this one is is a different model and this one is the full color pass through camera. So I just wanted to double check on that and it, it seems like that is the case based on the limited amount of uh, material on these that there is out there. Cool, and what's interesting now is that those cameras are up, these these ribbons just kind of go all over the place. We'll, uh, we'll take this out with a heat gun here in a bit. We'll go ahead and take out the cameras on the other side now. And kind of interestingly, but not surprisingly, that whole assembly just comes up and those cameras are just kind of in place on that ribbon, a little bit of dust. Cool, all right, interesting. Okay. And that leaves us with our actual depth sensor. To the best that I can determine, it's actually an infrared line emitter. It just uh, emits a infrared light and calculates the depth that way. If somebody knows more about that than me, then uh, please please leave me a comment and, uh, and educate me on it. And there's our infrared emitter. Now all we got is these ribbons that are adhered on here. So I want to take a heat gun and remove those. We'll take those off next. I've got my little metal spudger tool here. Works pretty well for this kind of thing without damaging anything. Alrighty. And there is some sort of sensor here. I couldn't even begin to tell you what sensor this is or what this is supposed to do, but I'm sure that it has something to do with this op amp that's here. Again, if you know in the comments, if you know more about this than I do, if you work for Meta or you know you're a you're an engineer by trade, uh, please, please hit me up. I'd love to crack the code. All right, and then next we've got this little guy. And this is what we're left with. Interesting. So I'm gonna take this a step further. I'm gonna go ahead and pop this cracked glass out because I'm curious to know what this is, if this is covering anything. 
or if that's just material there designed to protect this sensor. I'm pretty sure what is going on here is that this is emitting light and this is the actual sensor itself. I'm pretty sure that's what's going on, but I'm, I'm not 1000% confident. Okay, so this is just adhesive and plastic under here. But I think it's really interesting and, and more evidence to, to point to the fact that Meta did not design these things to be replaced. If this front sensor breaks or is damaged in any way, it seems it seems pretty obvious that it's just, it's just gonna require a full replacement. Anyways, fascinating. Now that we kind of understand what's going on with these face plates here, we can go ahead and move on and actually do this repair. So obviously on this headset, it's this sensor that's been damaged. So obviously on this headset, it's this sensor that's been damaged by the impact here, which is not surprising because the hole that's on the front of the faceplate makes that a weak spot. What I'll do is I'll take the functioning sensors out of this headset and I'll transplant them to this good working faceplate, leaving behind the broken sensor and this broken glass here. To get started, we need to take out the face gasket here and we'll remove that using our spudger tool. I'm going to kind of speed through this. If you need a more detailed explanation of how to take off the front gasket or the faceplate, you can go ahead and check out my recent full teardown video of the Quest 3. I go over that in great detail. Now in order to detach these cameras and sensors from the motherboard, I've got to remove this Bluetooth antenna here. And there's a few screws that hold that in. We're going to take those out with our Phillips screwdriver. Again, these screws are not, they're not magnetic, they're non-ferrous. So you're going to want to use tweezers to hold onto these so they don't just fly every place. And then this Bluetooth antenna just kind of pops off. We've got to make sure that we're careful about that antenna there. And then there's really only three cables we need to pop off. We'll go this one first and then the bottom one, and then we'll go to this one on the other side here. There's adhesive here on the back of this ribbon. There's not on the backs of these ribbons, so we just need to be really careful and slowly pull that up with even pressure. Perfect. Now I'll take these cameras and I'll just transfer them to this faceplate here. That actually lines up pretty easy. I thought that was going to be harder to line up blind because you don't, you can't really see anything. It's hard to get a good angle on it, but that was actually fairly simple. This one's, this one's no problem at all because that one, that ribbon pops out a little bit. Cool. All right. Now we'll go ahead and screw those back in. Cool. And then we'll go ahead and take this bracket off as well. Okay. Cool. That seems like it's flush. To anybody who's curious, I don't know why I'm going back and forth like this. I probably could have just taken all the sensors out on the one and then transferred them all to the other, but I decided to do it in steps. I don't have a rhyme or reason for it, other than it's just less screws and parts floating around that can fall off the table. And fortunately, that just all sticks together. So that one's pretty easy. Alrighty, so we've got all our so we've got all our cameras and sensors in there. We'll go ahead and screw these brackets back on. Alrighty, everything's in place there, so we should just be able to plug this back in and hopefully everything tracks and works fine. And then the Bluetooth antenna doesn't have to be plugged in in order for me to test this, so I'm just going to go ahead and turn it on and make sure that everything's tracking, except for the fact that it's dead. Alrighty. Let's see what we got here. And it's hard for me to show you because uh, it just doesn't pick up very well, but it is tracking. It is turning on. I am getting an image in the in the screen, so that's good enough for me. I think um, you know when when you move it around, everything stays in place. That means tracking's good. It's charging. It's booting up. I'm getting an image. 
That checks all the boxes for me. I'll go ahead and put it back together and we'll give it a real full test. Just kind of a tip when you're putting the screws back in for the faceplate, start at the top of the headset with the screws because the bottom of the faceplate um, wants to kind of pop out a little bit. So if you work your way from the top to the bottom, uh, this one, this one, this one, and then this one, there won't be as much tension on it. So it's less likely to crack or be out of place and it's just a little easier on you. Putting this face gasket back in place uh, can, can be a little tricky. Just make sure that you clip the bridge of the nose clip first, and then I'm going to clip the ones at the forehead, and then the base of the nose, and then we got to line up the eyes so those are easy to clip in, and we'll just kind of work our fingers around like this so they all clip in place. We'll do the same thing on this side, and then these outside clips just kind of fall in place. Perfect. All right, and that headset's ready to go back home. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a lot. I know there's still things that, about the Quest 3 that I'm learning and that the community is learning, and there's there's a lot that Meta's kept under wraps that we're just kind of having to figure out as we go. With, as we get more information and do more testing and do more repairs, hopefully we can reveal some answers to mysteries that make the repair process even easier for you to do at home. If you did like this video, if you did learn something, please do give us that like and subscribe. It really helps us out, helps us build our community. If you do have any questions or requests for repair videos, please leave me a comment down below. And with that, we will see you guys on the next one.